titled why God persists in this video I hope to provide definitive answers to a question that has apparently eluded the likes of Richard Dawkins Sam Harris and Daniel Dennett it has also been recently tackled by Pascal Boyer and Robert Hine I feel that faith is a purely natural phenomenon and can be explained with science and reason there is a naturalistic explanation for why the great majority of human beings are and always have been religious and God believers there is one simple answer, but I don't feel that will be sufficient to assuage anyone that the massive popularity and persistence of religion and God belief is not rooted in some inherent ontological truth that is because God is real. In order to show that God does not exist, it is important to offer a bioevolutionary reason for why God belief has been so stubbornly durable, especially during a time of scientific advancement, when one would feel we no longer need to invoke God to explain things that we can't figure out. Instead of rendering just the first simple explanation that I feel is the answer, I would dig deeper and show that God believes stems from a meta-convergence of reasons and causations. Very on the, wall. the main and simple reason humans believe in God and are spiritual and religious is that it is the natural result of cerebral complexity. This can be scientifically vetted by conducting a thought experiment involving the contemplation that no other species on earth shows any signs of organized religion, God belief, or spirituality. With that in mind, what separates humans from all the other species and organisms of the earth? The answer would of course be cerebral complexity, which involves acute sentience and advanced self-awareness. With that simple thought experiment, you have the obvious answer for where God belief and spirituality comes from. It's a natural side effect of sentience and cerebral complexity. In fact, superstition, which is where God belief and spirituality comes from, is the first order of business for a complex mind that lacks answers. A cerebrally complex mind that lacks answers naturally evolves superstition as a way to explain the unknown. Superstition is defined as a belief in something not justified by reason or evidence. But when you are cerebrally complex yet primitive, like our ancestors were, you lacked all kinds of evidence and reason. So in order to cope with that, cerebrally complex minds adapt to form superstition to fill that lack of evidence with superstitious beliefs and answers that fit whatever notions they wanted to conclude upon. But this answer will still probably be too simplistic. Theists could just say, well of course we believe what no other species does, because God made us in his image. We're not like other species and we're different and special. And being superstitious still doesn't explain why God believe continues in this day and age and why it has been so intractable and almost universal. Therefore, we must dig deeper to show that God belief is truly a phenomenon that can be fully explained with logic and reason. The second most important reason why God persists, even in the age of science, is that spirituality, which leads to God belief in religion, is evolutionarily advantageous. The first way God believes is evolutionarily advantageous is that it allowed us to understand our environment better. How did it do that? Well, in prehistoric times, man was very primitive intellectually and had answers for basically nothing. In order to make sense of his environment, the only way he knew how was to explain the unknown with another unknown, which would satisfy early man's primitive brain, that he had control of his environment because he could answer something he really didn't have an answer for. How was thunder made? Saying I don't know is evolutionarily disadvantageous because the less you understand of your environment, the less likely you are to thrive in it and survive and thrive is the name of the evolutionary game. So in order to provide an answer he didn't have, mankind evolved to use an unknown higher power to fill the gaps of his ignorance. Now, feeling he answered how thunder was made by saying his God did it, he secured peace of mind and mental control of his environment and was better able to thrive in it since he had the mental security of answering something that was scary and unknown, in this case, thunder. The better you are able to make sense of your environment, the more secure you are. Security is a direct link to survival. If you can explain the unknown with another unknown, you satisfy yourself that you answer what you crave to know, and now you have that much more security, in this case mental, 
rather than physical. Which again means you are more likely to survive and thrive, which is where it has evolutionary advantage. Another way God believed in spirituality was evolutionarily advantageous is that it provided a moral compass of sorts for our primitive ancestors that made rogue members less likely. If you feel you answer to a higher power and you evolve a spirituality that invests your life with meaning, you are less likely to run amok, rape and kill your immediate clan and be more inclined to cooperation and cohesion and in a hunter-gatherer paradigm that is usually advantageous in bringing in more food, helping the sick and injured of the social group, and allowing members of that group to live long enough to pass on their genetic material. Basically with spirituality, if you evolve to account for more than yourself and live for more than yourself, you were likely to be group oriented and social, which was and is conducive to group survival, which leads to gene survival. So natural selection ended up favoring our primitive ancestors that had stronger spiritual and religious leanings and feelings. The theists were probably object in two ways to this powerful and basically comprehensive explanation for the origin of God belief. One is to say, if spirituality is so advantageous, then why is it something we feel we should move beyond and get rid of? The answer is, we no longer need to have spirituality because our social evolution has evolved to such an extent that depending on superstition and invisible boogeymen to provide answers we don't have or to keep us from misbehaving, it's no longer required. We are not those primitive humans from long ago. This brings up the second objection a theist may render, which is, God must be real because if he wasn't and our God belief in spirituality or evolutionary in origin, we would have long given up belief in God as we became more advanced and certainly would in this age of massive scientific progress. The answer to that is a simple one. Although most of us are advanced enough from a cultural and social standpoint to no longer need God, belief, religion, and spirituality, our reptilian midbrains have not caught up to that advancement. To scientifically show this, one need only see various examples of how our midbrains have not caught up with our current progress. You'll notice that many females are attracted to men with status symbols like cars and large homes. Why? Well, this is because the primitive part of her brain hasn't caught up with her current level of cognitive advancement. Our primitive ancestors used cues like large kills and luxurious animal skins to indicate a male that was healthy, strong, and could likely protect her offspring. These were ways for our female ancestors to identify the alpha male. Since our brains haven't fully caught up with our current advancement, females still respond to status symbols, even though in this day and age they are not needed to indicate masculine fitness and strength. Another example is that women tend to date quote-unquote jerks. Why? Again, it's because our brains haven't caught up with our current level of cultural advancement. In primitive times, the qualities and traits exhibited and identified now as being a jerk back then were likely to be conducive to that male being strong and more likely to protect her young. In this day and age, such quote-unquote jerk behavior is no longer needed to protect offspring, but the female midbrain has not caught up to our current social advancement. Just like males go out and acquire status symbols, because the primitive part of our brain has yet to catch up to our modern ways and realize that status symbols aren't necessarily needed to land a prized female. So in conclusion, the idea that Richard Dawkins allegedly put forward that religious faith is a misfiring of something useful, a Darwinian mistake, is grossly incorrect and wrong. God belief in spirituality can be totally understood in evolutionary terms and can be clearly shown to have had massive evolutionary advantage for our ancestors. This ends part one of how science and logic can give a complete and ultimate explanation for the origin of faith and God belief. I hope you will join me for part two that will complete this videographic dissertation.